Last week, we went through the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, and the stomach. We spent most of our time in the stomach talking about that mechanical digestion, some chemical digestion, and a um, little bit of absorption. But of course, movement through the stomach into the small intestine. We did not talk a lot about the small intestine besides to talk a little bit about how entry of chyme into the duodenum, that first region, regulates gastric activity. So that intestinal phase of gastric activity. So this week, we're gonna start here. We're gonna talk about the small intestine and what happens in it. Um, probably the most complex region of the digestive system. It's also going to receive secretions from the liver and pancreas, oops, that's not the pancreas, pancreas, which means we're gonna talk about those as well. So we'll spend quite a bit of time in the small intestine before moving on to the large intestine um, and defecation. Along with this, we'll talk about absorption of some specific nutrients. So I wanna start this week with what is the functions, what are the functions, sorry, <laughs> of the small intestine? Write these down. Okay, so we've got that chyme entering. I'm not gonna answer exactly like you should be. You're gonna answer, answer the basic functions. I'm gonna just start with the review. Um, I think you should not be copying down exactly what I say because you should have already answered it. Okay, chyme is entering. That's what's right here. And we're going to, as I feel, several hours of mixing in the stomach, several hours there. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time, that chyme moving through the small intestine. Um, first, I wanna tell you the name of the, of the three regions of the small intestine, then I'll briefly go over the processes that happen in those regions. I'm gonna go ahead and write down the first one. We're gonna have propulsion, right? Because we have to get stuff through that, this entire long tube, which is the small intestine. Okay, I'm gonna choose a different color here to label my three regions of the small intestine. Um, the one directly connected to the stomach is gonna continue like here a little bit as well. So this part here, the first part is going to be our duodenum. Second region somewhere, so there's a bunch of twirly twirly, um, it's in back where you can't see all of it. Not gonna ask you for like the locations of transition between the three regions of the intestine. Um, Jujinum, did I spell that right? Ju, no, Jujunum, yes. And then the last region, which is adjacent, adjacent to the large intestine. So right here is the large intestine. This is going to be our ilium. How do you spell ilium? Not the same way as the ilium bone. It's an E, spell that one correctly. Um, don't jump in, that's the order. So throughout those three regions, the function does change. We're gonna be focused on the duodenum, which is convenient, that's first. Um, so the duodenum is where there's gonna be secretions from the pancreas and liver coming in. And we're gonna have lots of chemical digestion, particularly in the duodenum. So this is a main function of the small intestine. This is where we also control gastric emptying. We'll talk about the pancreas and liver's role, of course. We are going to have absorption as well. So let me do that in this color. Again, it's happening throughout the entire small intestine, but it does happen more as we move on because as the chemicals start to break down, we can start to absorb them. So absorption, lots of absorption. That's gonna be out the three regions, um, but happening a little bit later on. So nutrients are gonna to go to the bloodstream and then actually go to the liver first. 
the last one we have is the last function that things have besides ingestion and defecation, which is not going to happen here. Um, what's the other one? Mechanical digestion. There's a special way of mechanically digesting. It's not going to be the same as in the stomach, right, where we're like sloshing, churning, but it's somewhat similar. It's, it's small intestine um, initiated or controlled. It's going to be um, primarily segmentation is what this is called. So propulsion is mostly peristalsis. Mechanical digestion is going to occur via segmentation. That's your overview. Let's actually look at those two ways of movement right now. So peristalsis, you've already learned about. This is what's shown here. Peristalsis, peristalsis is primarily a means of propulsion. Propulsion is occurring. This is where we saw it before, from the mouth um, to the stomach. This is also going to occur from like the duodenum all the way through to the ileum. And it's the way that the smooth muscle contracts to allow something to move in one direction. That's what propulsion is, right? You propulse something, um, propulse something. Alternate waves of contraction and relaxation in one direction. A little bit of mixing occurs. This occurs throughout the digestive tract, right? Esophagus um, as well. That's what we saw before. Segmentation is, does not occur in the esophagus, it occurs in the small intestine, somewhat in the large intestine as well. So this here is segmentation. You can see the main thing is just that the smooth muscle, muscle contractions occur differently. What that means is we're going to have mixing happen. So this is primarily for mixing. So mechanical digestion. Here, non-adjacent segments are going to contract at the same time, and then relax. This moves food forwards and backwards. So here, this one's relaxed, and here it's, oops, here it's contracted. Relax, contract. So this alternation of contraction or relaxation is going to allow food to mix with all the intestinal juices. Um, this is what's happening here as the, the color changes. So this has been, this is intestinal juices. We've mixed it up. Some propulsion occurs via this mechanism, but the primary goal of this is mixing. So this is unique to the small intestine. Some does occur in the large intestine as well. Okay, one more thing for this intro, a little bit more anatomy other than just those three regions of the small intestine. Let's look at the liver and gallbladder and then the connections from those to the small intestine. We'll see this again when we get there, but here's a right introduction to it. So here is our small intestine, right? Here would be our duodenum. And let's actually label a few other things. Um, I'm sorry, the start of the small intestine is right, right here. This would still be duodenum through here as well. So here is right here. What is that? I, our pyloric sphincter. And I have this tied, title, this slide titled sphincters, partially to help me remember how to spell it too. The let me erase some of those actual lines. There are a couple other sphincters. Sphincters are pretty common in the digestive system. One of those is going to connect to our liver and gallbladder, which is why um, I said we were talking about that. Okay, so we've got the pyloric sphincter right there. This is our duodenum, and actually we just label that like that. Right here, we're going to zoom in. This is a sphincter. 
This is the sphincter that controls pancreatic and liver juices, gallbladder juices, um, controls their entry into the duodenum. So this is called the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Isn't that convenient? Much better name than the sphincter of Odie. Here is the sphincter, smooth muscle that can contract and relax. And distal to that, there is a common bile duct and a pancreatic duct that we will look at each of those uh, more closely. They combine together to form this um, hepatopancreatic ampulla and then goes to the sphincter. This is the term I have for your key terms here. The sphincter is going to regulate bile and pancreatic juice flow into the small intestine. So that's why that one's important. Um, so we'll come back to this when we get into the small intestine in more detail. The other sphincter I want to tell you about, where else would we have a sphincter here? Um, we'll go through the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum right here. You want to be able to regulate flow to the large intestine. So there's a sphincter right here um, called the ilio, ilio cecal sphincter. The cecum is this large portion of, of the large intestine right here. This is the appendix hanging off there. So ilio cecal valve sphincter is a pretty good name in terms of making sense. <laughs>